Hello, hello. Namaste. What's up? I mean, really, what's up? Like, what the hell is up? Like, what, what the hell is going on? <laughs> Might be a common question these days, as there's been a lot of uh, Neptune, uncertainty, and chaos, and confusion. And so, in these videos, like every couple weeks, we talk about the collective worldly energy, what's going on, and the physical, emotional, mental, spiritual. And we've had a lot of Neptune going on. We just had Neptune turn direct yesterday on the 20th, a few days before Neptune was exactly conjoined the Moon's South Node in Pisces on the 17th. And so for those who watched the last astrology video, that video was actually shot before this whole election thing happened. And we've obviously experienced some ramifications and it's been affecting a lot of us. And so I just want to sort of uh, refresh our memory and what we said in the last report, which is that all of this Neptune turning direct on the Moon's South Node is bringing up this sense of uncertainty, chaos. Life suddenly becomes very surreal, very dreamlike. I've heard nightmarish from quite a few different people. And what we also talked about in the last video is how these experiences and circumstances are bringing to the surface from the collective unconsciousness particular beliefs and perspectives that are age old, thousands of years old, they are outdated, they are unhealthy, and they are preventing us from evolving forward as a collective. And so these collective beliefs and perspectives are being yanked out of the unconsciousness, put on center stage, so that way we can see and address these old, outdated, unhealthy beliefs into something that is more evolved and something that is more helpful. Now, what we also talked about is something that I have been repeatedly addressing and probably will, and I hope not to beat a dead horse, but this is just so critically important that some of these collective beliefs that need to change are our projections onto others, onto other groups onto other ethnicities, onto other genders, etc. And we can just simplify that into being hatefulness. And hatefulness can disguise itself in the form of spirituality. Hatefulness can describe itself in the form of the right thing that is needed to do. And what we can say is that these are confused beliefs. What Neptune fundamentally is is ultimate reality. Neptune is the essence, that which is in and permeates in between all things. It is the fundamental water of spirit which moves and animates everything, is what Neptune and Pisces is. It's unconditional love, it's the heart, it's the nature of the soul, the nature of the spiritual. That which says we are all connected, we are all one, we are all love, is Neptune. And so obviously if we are dealing with beliefs, particularly spiritual beliefs, that are putting out there the other notion, such as there is an enemy out there, that there is darkness out there, that there is something to watch out for and protect yourself and shield yourself from, because this group or this nation, or this creed, or this practice is the enemy, is what's wrong, and we point the finger out there. We are actually allowing for hate to fill the world and fill the atmosphere, which of course prevents our own forward movement and evolution, because what evolution is, is a reflection of love. We live in a reality that permits us to always get into a better appreciation of our world, of ourselves, and enjoy and celebrate love in ever-deepening and evolving ways, is what the ultimate reality of Neptune reveals. 
But what we've been seeing with Neptune on the Moon's south node, and will continue to see, as that's going to persist this next couple months at least, is everything that gets in the way of that. Now, Neptune just having station direct yesterday, this is another one that can bring up the confusion, the murkiness, the surreal nature of the reality in which we live. And we had Mercury square Neptune last week while all this was happening. I mean, it's just been good for you if you've been able to stay afloat and stay on task and remember what's important in your own personal life because chances are we've all been sort of absorbed in the collective. This is reflected through Facebook which was born when the Sun was conjoined Neptune to the collective unconsciousness. We've been absorbed in the world, in the worldly, in the culture, in the society. And this is again, all of this focus on the world, our culture, our nations has been a part of bringing all of these issues to the forefront. The collective beliefs that are unhealthy, that need to go. We're celebrating Thanksgiving in the United States this approaching Thursday, which is supposedly <laughs> supposed to be a time of celebrating when the pilgrims and the in Native Americans came together and had a feast, which may not even be historically accurate. But in terms of where we are in our collective world and doing that type of Thanksgiving, I think that we might really be aware and noticing are vast differences from one another at this time. There's a huge amount of divisionism happening in the world. And again, we need to remember, need to remember that there are no good guys and bad guys like blame the other, and these people are responsible for everything that's wrong with the world. We can't do that type of hateful dividing and we're on the right side of the fence, they're on the wrong side of the fence because it ultimately leads to overcomplication, distraction, drama, and we don't work together and nothing actually gets done. So, in addition to all of this Neptunian confusion, and Neptune is like the fog machine of our solar system. Again, it's, you know, it's this murkiness, it's the, this surrealness. In addition to all this that's going on right now and for the next couple months, we're having a real focus on reprioritization. What is our goals? What is our direction? What is our truth? What is our philosophy? What is our beliefs? But how are we moving? Are we moving in the right direction? Are we expanding the way that we hope to? Are we able to achieve our goals? These are some major questions that can be brought up these next couple weeks as well. As we are just having the sun moving into Sagittarius right now, as I'm filming this, so the next month is this Sagittarius having to do with the goals, the focus, and we will be having a new moon in Sagittarius, seven degrees, approaching November 29th. Now that new moon is going to be square to Neptune. So this, in terms of being challenged, in terms of are these goals working, is it realistic, or is this just a daydream? Is this actually working towards growth and expansion and harmony, as we have Jupiter in Libra? Jupiter is the ruler of Sagittarius. These are the questions that can be coming up and it can be a major creative tension. Reality versus ideals. Dreams and beliefs versus what is actually taking place one step after the next here on Earth. And we have an enormous amount of closing squares going on between planets these next couple weeks as well. We have Venus in a closing square to Uranus. We've had Saturn in a closing square to Neptune all year. This new moon's going to be a closing square into Neptune. Sun is in a closing square to Neptune. Jupiter's in a closing square to Pluto. And so all of these closing squares is a disseminating disintegration. And it's generally a time when we're looking at our goals, our directions, our original purpose. And how well is it working? It can be a time of really challenging what were the past focus, what were the past goals. It's a time of really challenging and revolutionizing those things. It's about rejecting the old and starting to find our way into the new, but this finding our way into the new can be through this type of sort of searching through the dark 
So at least we did have our sun move into Sagittarius out of the sort of deep murky passions of Scorpio. And we will have Black Moon Lilith remaining in Scorpio through the end of the year. There's still a lot of passion, a lot of heat, a lot of penetrative energy that we're doing. But right now it's kind of about where are we moving? Where are we taking things? And all of these things can be very much changing. And it can be taken very seriously where our goals are. We're having conversations that need to happen. We're having Mercury form a conjoinment with Saturn on this Wednesday, the 23rd. And then is forming a square to Chiron and is trying to Uranus this approaching weekend, the 26th and the 27th. These are some deep, critical conversations that we're having and are very, ne very necessary. You know, scrutinizing thoughts, important discussions, serious topics that need to be communicated. And these can inevitably be healing. They can be, again, bringing new ideas to the surface in terms of how are we going to plan things out? How are we going to restructure? How are we going to reprioritize? And there is also a significant focus on relationships going on at this time. As we're going to have Venus conjoin with Pluto, this Friday, the 25th, simultaneously the day that Jupiter is square to Pluto, square to Venus. And that closing Jupiter-Pluto square is challenging us, how are our goals working? How is it working in our partnerships? How is it working in our relationships? You know, Venus is going through Capricorn through the second week of December. And that puts this focus on making our relationships actually maturely work. Wherever Venus is going through this next year, whatever sign that's in, that's where, what is being illuminated because Jupiter is in the sign of Libra, which Venus rules. And so Venus coming up to Pluto in Capricorn is serious. And it's when we're changing things. It's a reboot in terms of our relationships. It's when we can start to butt heads with our partner. Unconsciousness meets unconsciousness and they beat into each other so that way we can make each other aware of our own unconsciousness. And it's deep. And it's addressing the issues that need to be addressed. And this has to do with our goals, our orientation, and our truth. The last Jupiter-Pluto conjoinment was in 2007. And we can look back to that time and think about what philosophy was being born. How was my orientation towards reality being structured at this time? What goals, what truths was I really investigating and penetrating into in 2007? Because this closing square can be a reflection back to that, but it is preparing now to readjust, to transform into something else. And the next Jupiter-Pluto conjoinment is going to be in 2020, which is a really significant year in the astrology because there's going to be a Jupiter-Saturn-Pluto conjoinment on Saturn's and Pluto's south node in Capricorn, which is going to be a fundamental restructuring of global powers. Our own identification to authority, to powers and traditions and the past is in this mass cycle preparing to change. And right now, we as a collective are looking at this stuff. What is working? What is not? What needs to go? What needs to be revolutionized? And there is this revolutionary energy happening now with Mars and Aquarius being ruled by Uranus in Aries mutual reception between Uranus and Mars. They're talking to one another. We also have asteroid Ceres, the mother asteroid that has much to do with women and femininity. The home and the mother is moving retrograde and is going to station direct the second week of December conjoined Uranus. And this is another one that is taking us into our relationship, into our family and home, seeing how it's working, seeing what needs to be changed. And these bigger issues are being brought to the forefront. And a lot of this is the work of our day and age, which is how do we have simultaneous independence and security in our relationship? How are we actually structuring these things? And Venus square to Uranus on the day of our new moon, on the 29th, is saying we need to reprioritize and revolutionize how we are orienting towards the other and how we are oriented towards our own goals and values and beliefs. This new moon 
is also, at 7 degrees of Sagittarius, going to be conjoined asteroid Juno. And asteroid Juno is the partnership asteroid. So we're seeing how are our relationships, our partnerships, and the things that we are committed to. Because say you're single and you're not in a relationship, or you're a hermit and you never see other people. That doesn't mean that this isn't affecting you. It's also what we're devoted to. It's what we're committed to. It's what we value and give our energy to and cherish like a treasure within ourself. And that new moon in Juno is square to Neptune, which is challenging. Is this real? Is this reality? Are we just daydreaming in our partnerships? Are we actually oriented towards the same goals? What is our mutual philosophy? What is our shared truth? And we can be experiencing this on many levels in our relationships, in our family, in our home, in our connection to one another and the world. Sagittarius is about the uniform truth. Neptune in Pisces is about working as a uniform whole. Are we doing this right now in this day and age? No, we're not. We're really disheveled. We're really confused. We're really spread thin. We don't know exactly where we should put our energy in a way that's going to be most useful to us. And that is what we are exploring at this time. It's not necessarily about getting it all right. It's not necessarily about being perfect. We have to, in this North Node in Virgo year, be willing to adjust, make little changes here and there, little fine-tuning, just one foot after the next. But with all of this Sagittarius stuff, it's really about seeing, are we dedicating our energy into something that has real meaning to me? What is my purpose right now? Should I be spending all my energy in work? Should I be channeling more energy at home? Should I be putting my energy into all of this political endeavor? Is that what we need as a nation? Is that what we need to do as a people? Or do we need to put our energy somewhere else? Are we forming our own communities, our own little subdivisions? Or are we trying to end the subdivisions and start to expand and to include more? These are all questions that we may not have all the answers to, particularly not served to us on a silver platter. And it is the time for these crises for these explosions, for these releasings to naturally happen. To let these closing squares, let the crumbling and the revolutionizing happen because that is, despite what our egos prefer, and this is a scary time to be an ego, which means to be a human being. It's a scary time because it feels like the rug's getting pulled out from under us. It feels like there's nowhere to go. It feels like the people that we used to think that we knew and understood, maybe we are starting to think, man, do I really know and understand this person? And so a lot of this stuff can be brought up to the surface and it is this time of just letting it burst open, letting this thing break out of shape. And what comes out of this is the important discussions that need to be happening. This is Mercury on Saturn and Venus on Pluto within days of each other is that we need to be having these important and real conversations with our partners, with our immediate associates, with ourselves. If there's a part of ourself that's been stubbornly resisting some truth or some understanding, it needs to be addressed. This period is about shaking things up so that way new truths and new possibilities can be born that will be completely different from how they were. That's this, this Jupiter-Pluto cycle going back to 2007. It's that that goal and that orientation and that truth, it had meaning and purpose within it. But now we're looking at how can I take that purpose and meaning and evolve it even further into something that is going to be what? The next conjoinment between Jupiter and Pluto is in Capricorn. It's going to be real. It's going to be grounded on the actual planet in which we're living in the actual time in which we're living where there is this orientation to power structures and there are oppressors and there are people that are dictating and limiting our creative possibilities as human beings. And the mutual reception between Mars and Uranus going on this next month is just about let's cut that stuff out. Venus in closing square to Uranus, let's cut that out. We need freedom, we need liberation. How are we going to reorient our own power, our energy, power structures in the world 
our work, our job? How are we going to reprioritize to allow these things to give birth to what we actually see as important and meaningful as human beings? And this new moon in on the 29th, we want to sow that seed of intention. This is what I'm committed to. This is my truth. Asteroid Juno is the asteroid of committance. This is what I'm devoted to. This is what I give myself to. And the square to Neptune is challenging us. Is it real? And the recommendation I'm going to give all of you very blatantly, despite it maybe not being what we want to hear, is make sure it's real. Don't just hang something off on a thread like, yeah, I don't know, I'm feeling all this stuff beneath the surface, but it's too complicated. I'll just sweep it off to the side. And the negative side of Neptune on the south node in Pisces is self-sacrifice. I'm just going to do what everybody else does. Or, oh, it's just how the world is. It's just how the world is. You know, oh, you just got to throw your hands up. And it's just like, this is not the time to surrender to a machine or a belief or an orientation that is not fundamentally healthy or not working for you. It's the time to address those little intuitions, those feelings that are beneath the surface. It is time to have these confrontations and these important discussions in our relationships. And I promise you, they'll be very productive. They will birth new creative means to work better with one another, to be able to function healthier, to be able to be in your own creativity, in your own expression, in a more authentic, less restrictive kind of way. But in order to get there, we do have to confront and address and be willing to even admit the things that we don't know. I don't totally know how this is. Uh, you ask me this really important black and white question, and my answer to you is I definitely have no idea. I don't really know. There's all of this unresolved stuff in me. Let's talk about this unresolved stuff. It goes back into my past. It goes back into my childhood. That's how we want to frame these discussions and these, you know, this is a time where stuff is getting brought to the surface. And that's not always fun. It can be like a volcano. You might have some volcanoes erupting in your immediate family, partnerships, etc. Or in yourself. And then what oftentimes happens is we do the spiritual thing, which is actually not the spiritual thing, because you know the message that I put out all the time is don't think that spirituality looks a particular way. That it's all about smiling and being happy all the time because then you live in denial. Or the other way to live in denial is to believe that, oh, this hateful orientation to the world puts me on the right side of the fence. Oh, well, I, you know, I'm posting all of this political stuff on Facebook, so that makes me productive and good today. And it's just like, hell no. We actually have to be real with what's happening inside of ourselves as individuals before we're going to be able to help anything going on in the collective. We need to understand our own biases. We need to understand our own perspective. That's what Sagittarius is. Sagittarius is your perspective, is your truth, is your philosophy. But do you see the entire universe as if you are a god sitting upon a cloud or a throne? No, you don't. You see it from a limited human being perspective. And our perspective and consciousness is hopefully always expanding. And this is a time where we are being challenged. Expand your consciousness. Go deeper than you've gone before. Think about more things than you've thought about before. Take it down another f few levels, you know. There's more than what meets the eye. And as our consciousness expands and more of that information comes in, the truth evolves and changes. Oh my gosh, I thought that it really was such a simple black and white thing and that all I had to do was sign this piece of paper. Or I thought that it really was just a situation where the best thing I could do is just be defensive and shut myself down and keep all the enemies and perpetrators away. And it turns out that actually this is a far more complicated situation. And maybe the group or the people that I've been fighting with are not actually evil, hateful people. They just have some issues, going back to their childhood. They never had a role model of a father or a mother. Or maybe their culture looks so different than mine, I just can't simply comprehend what they're doing. Or their own 
you know, p system of politeness or something like this. It's just like there is more than what meets the eye. Sagittarius is about exploration. It's about traveling. Learn about different cultures. Learn about different philosophies. Learn about different truths. That's what real spirituality is. It's not limiting yourself to anything. It's about expanding and appreciating the whole story, the whole picture. The mountaintop point of view comes from that willingness to learn about the other, to integrate the other, to embrace the other. Even if the other is pointing back in you and saying, meh, you did everything wrong, blah, 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 blah. Okay, <laughs> all right, I did everything wrong. Why do you think that? What's your own story? What's your background? What's my story? What's my background, etc. So there is a very good opportunity for us to grow and learn and expand in a very rapid way. It does require some surrendering and letting the old goals, the old orientations, not ultimately die. Just go through a death and rebirth process in order to evolve and expand into something that is deeper, more real, more palpable, something that you can take with you everywhere instead of just certain places. It is a constant existing truth. This is who I am. This is what I do. These are my goals. These are my priorities. This is what I, as a human being, offer to the other. Us in a relationship, our partnership, it's very important for us to have these mutual philosophies and goals in our partnerships. This is stuff I talk about all the time in my individual readings, is that we need to have some type of understanding. We are two souls that are helping each other evolve. We're both individuals. We're both unique. You might be evolving and becoming stronger and more confident in that direction. I might be evolving, becoming more creative and spontaneously expressive, but we come together and we help each other both evolve. Even if it means hurting each other and bumping into each other and bringing up our own stuff, that is a part of the function of this evolution. And our love for one another allows this dance of union of separation to carry our own unique evolutionary journeys forward as we continue to live and exist together. And so I'll conclude by reading the Sabian symbol of this new moon which is in the cauldron of the universe. Metals are forming. The fusion reactor, this is where everything is right now. It's not defined, it's just in this developmental stage. But there is this irresistible determination for capacity for hard work. And this also says, the Sabian symbol is about crystallization of purpose. It is the willfulness of our experience. So getting back into this, this is what my meaning is. This is what my truth is. We can be re-inspired. We can sort of melt down the old structures, the old machines into this fusion reactor in order for them to be reborn into something more fresh, something more useful, and something that's actually going to unite us all as a collective under one uniform truth and one direction which could very well be, holy crap, we need to heal our planet. We need to heal our earth. We are on the verge of a existential crisis, and that is going to force us all to be united together. And I'm only laughing because it's just like, what else are you going to do? Holy moly, that is going to be getting our attention. And more than likely, that will be a part of the next Jupiter-Pluto conjoinment in 2020. So in all of this very deep existential processing and searching, let us remember that life is a journey of exploration. And as we journey and we experiment and we learn and we experience more and more and more, our consciousness does continue to expand outward until we do have that understanding that, okay, this is all a part of the universal symphony, the universal truth, and we are all brothers and sisters, truthfully, and we are all devotees of love. And so in that endeavor, I'm very much wishing the best for all of you. 
I so much appreciate the opportunity to connect with each and every, well, to connect with some of you on an individual basis. It is such a gift for you, for me. And for all of you who view this channel too, thank you so much for allowing me to share and do what I do because it is so meaningful to be able to pass these ideas around and to, for us as human beings to inspire one another. And I'm constantly being inspired and uplifted by my work on an individual basis. So thank you so much. I have just changed my readings. They've become more simplified rather than being transit readings, natal readings. There's just a 60 minute reading and there's a 90 minute reading. And we look at the natal chart, we look at the transits, but it's much more so flexible and honed in per individual basis, dependent on your own inquiries and your own direction and what's going on in your life. So again, thank you so much for watching this video and thanks so much for having the opportunity to connect with all of you. I wish you all the best. Namaste.